Food chains. Food chains show which organisms eat other organisms. If we look at this simple food chain, the grass is eaten by rabbits and rabbits are eaten by foxes. So the arrow could be used to show is eaten by, but really the arrow shows the transfer of energy from one organism to the next. Let's think about this food chain with four steps in it. Grass is eaten by a grasshopper. Grasshoppers are eaten by snakes. Snakes are eaten by eagles. At the bottom, at the beginning of every single food chain, we always have a green plant. The green plant is able to photosynthesize, so it is able to capture sunlight energy and we call an organism that can do that a producer because it produces organic molecules, food molecules, using the energy from the sun and trapping it inside the molecules um, to allow other organisms to use that energy later on. And this is our first feeding level in a food chain and the biological term for that, scientific term for that, is the first trophic level. As we move up, grasshoppers eat grass. So they're herbivores, they're eating plant matter. They're also known as primary consumers because they are the first to consume the organic molecules. And this is the second feeding level, so the second trophic level. Snakes eat grasshoppers, so they are eating animal matter. That makes them carnivores. They are in the secondary consumers. They are the second consumers of the organic molecules made by the producers. And they are at the third trophic level, the third feeding level in this food chain. Up at the top, the eagle is also a carnivore. It is eating animal matter. Uh, it happens to be at the end of this particular food chain, so it is a top carnivore. It's the third consumer of the organic molecules, the food molecules, so it is a tertiary consumer. And it's at the fourth level, uh, fourth trophic level, fourth feeding level in our food chain. We met lots of new words there, so here are some definitions. So the producers were the organisms which made their own food molecules from carbon dioxide and water using sunlight for energy and the producers are plants. The primary consumer, they're the organisms that eat the producers, they're always herbivores. Secondary consumers eat the primary consumers, so they are carnivores. Tertiary consumers eat secondary consumers, they are also carnivores. And each level of the food chain is a trophic level. So, looking back at our food chain again, it's never as simple as one food chain. Here, I've shown that worms eat everything once it's dead. That makes them detritivores. The job of worms and other organisms like them are to eat dead and decaying matter and break it up into smaller pieces. Of course, dead and decaying matter can also be eaten by things like bacteria and fungi, and they are decomposers. They perform a similar function to a detritivore. They're eating the dead and the decaying uh, material, but instead of just breaking them into smaller pieces, they actually break them into nutrients that can be recycled and taken up by the plants. So a decomposer is acting on a microscopic level, can't see them with the naked eye, and they actually produce uh, molecules that can be taken up by the producers, by the grass. Of course, a worm can die and be decomposed by bacteria or fungi, and bacteria and fungi can be eaten by worms. So you can start to see that food chains actually are um, a simplification of a much more complex system. Two new terms we met there, detritivore, the organisms breaking down dead and decaying matter into smaller pieces like worms, beetles, millipedes, they will do that job. And the decomposers with the microscopic organisms, uh, they break down the dead and decaying matter and recycle it for plants to use. And those examples were bacteria and fungi. Let's have a think about how energy flows through our food chain. The input, the energy comes in, 
in the form of sunlight energy and that's captured by the producer, by the grass in this example, inside the food molecules. And then the food molecules are passed on from organism to organism. So the energy is passed through the food chain. So you can see the energy flowing and being represented by the movement of the arrows. But at each level, we lose energy in the form of heat. Everything that living organisms do is inefficient. Whenever you move, whenever you carry out any process, you're going to lose energy in the form of heat. So ultimately, there's a flow of energy starting off with the sunlight at the beginning and flowing through the food chain and being lost as heat. This can explain why food chains can only be a certain number of organisms long because it's just too inefficient to support very long food chains. You just lose too much energy by the time you've gone through five or six different organisms. Here's a food chain with some familiar characters. In fact, it's a food web with some familiar characters. Uh, you can see that this food web is it's complex. There are um, a number of herbivores, a number of carnivores in this food chain and food web. And if I give them their real names, this is what it looks like. So you can see multiple uh, food chains in here. So we could start off with algae. We could go this way, zooplankton, clownfish, great white shark. So the algae is eaten by zooplankton, the little microscopic, algae, uh, little microscopic animals. Those are eaten by a clownfish, and the clownfish are eaten by the great white shark. Or we could start with algae is eaten by a sea turtle, and then the sea turtle is eaten by a great white shark. So we have one food chain going off to the left, and one food chain going off to the right, and then we've got a couple of food chains going up the centre. Algae being eaten by small invertebrates. Those are eaten by the blue regal, that was dory and then that's eaten by the great white shark. Here is our producer, the algae. We've got a number of different herbivores. Zooplankton is a herbivore, it eats algae. Small invertebrates are herbivores. Dory is a herbivore. The sea turtle is a herbivore. And the clownfish eats algae. Nemo is a herbivore. We have some carnivores, so zooplankton, the animals, are eaten by clownfish. The small invertebrates are eaten by the blue regal. And the sea turtle is eaten by the great white shark. In fact, the great white shark does lots of carnivorous stuff. It eats blue regals and it eats clownfish. So you can see that some organisms, like the clownfish and the blue regal, they actually carry out two roles in this food web. They are herbivores and carnivores, and they're given a special name which is omnivore. So omnivores are organisms feeding on plants and animals. Here, let's look at what happens if we remove the great white shark. If we remove this top carnivore, the number of clownfish will probably go up because nothing's eating them. The number of blue regals, will probably go up because nothing is eating them. And the sea turtles will increase in number as well because they're not being predated by the great white shark. But because of these three increases, what we probably find is that the algae numbers decrease because they are being eaten by larger numbers of herbivores. So you can see the effect of removing one organism from a food web, having different effects as it moves down the, down the web. But having um, a food web means that you can have a little bit of stability in an ecosystem, and the more complex a food web is, the more stable the populations of organisms are being supported by it. So if small invertebrates all died because of it, maybe, a, maybe a disease. Um, what you would see is the blue regals may not be affected 
Although they are no longer able to eat the small invertebrates, they can eat the algae. So their food source hasn't gone, it might just change for a while. So hopefully the blue regal population stays stable.